In this video, we're gonna take a look at how you can call the OpenAI API, and we're gonna do that using TypeScript and Node.js. Let's jump right in. The first thing you'll wanna do is sign up at openai.com. So when you go there, you'll see a sign up link, click on that, sign up and then sign in, and then go to the API area. You'll see platform.openai.com. Once you've logged in, you can click on your sign in. And from there, you can go to view API keys and you can generate a secret key. Now I'm gonna show you how that's gonna be used in just a moment once we jump into the code. Now that's all it would take though to get started. Now, from a code standpoint, what I'm gonna show you is how we could write a Node.js API in TypeScript and actually call OpenAI. So one of the first things I wanna show you is I have a package installed called OpenAI, and this will simplify, instead of writing fetch or Axios calls, you could use this, but if you didn't want to and you prefer to use like fetch, you could do that as well, and it would totally work. Now, I'm gonna use that in just a moment. The first thing I wanna show you though is that we have this complete email SMS messages API. Now notice it's gonna be a post, so we're gonna to have to post a JSON object. There's gonna be three things in the body of the post. There's gonna be the user prompt. In other words, what is it the user wants it to accomplish? There's gonna be a company name and there's gonna be a contact name. Now the end goal of this would be to have the user type in what they'd like, send that up to OpenAI, it returns back an email message they could use and an SMS message and they can edit it. So it really just saves the user some time. Now, once we validate that those three things have been passed, we're gonna jump to complete email SMS messages and we're gonna pass those three things in. So I'm gonna jump over to this openai.ts and you'll see complete email SMS messages. And there's really two things that are gonna go on here. First off, we're gonna create what's called a system prompt. We're gonna tell OpenAI basically how it should behave and act. Notice I'm gonna tell it you're an assistant, basically a bot designed to help users create email and SMS messages. And then I want you to return a JSON object. Now there's two ways you could actually return JSON data from OpenAI. One is what you're gonna see here. Another, which I won't cover in this video, but possibly may do another one, is you could actually use function calling, and that would return JSON as well. Now, in this one, I'm gonna show you some gotchas because you can totally have it return JSON data and it works very well most of the time. So I'll talk about that in just a moment. Now, in addition to telling OpenAI how that model should act, I'm also gonna give it some rules, be friendly, don't allow bad things, stuff like that. I'm gonna reiterate, I want you to return JSON, and this is the structure of it, and I'm even gonna give it a one-shot example. One shot is basically, you give an example of order delayed two days, give a 5% discount. And so it'll come back with this, at least that's what I hope it'll come back with. I then reiterate, I only want a JSON object back. It can be helpful in prompts to actually reiterate what you want multiple times. And that's it. So that tells OpenAI basically how to behave. Now the next part is the user prompt. What is it the user wants the assistant to actually do? Well, if they said order is delayed five days and then they want it to generate an email and an SMS message about that, then I'm gonna embed that right here and then also that contact name that you saw. Now the company name, it's not really being used here much, but you could also include company name. Now from there, I'm gonna call OpenAI. Now I'm gonna pass in the system prompt and the user prompt. I wanna mention this parameter really quickly. This is called the temperature. If you're not familiar with this, think of it as how creative do I want the assistant to be as it generates the email and the SMS messages. Zero would be, it's very predictable, it's not very creative. 0.5 is kind of mid-ground creative, and the closer you get up to one, it's like super creative. You could do poetry and you know stuff like that if you told it to. We wanna be creative so that every customer email doesn't sound identical in this case. That's why I'm doing 0.5. This is something you wanna play with though, and kind of see what it generates, see if it's what you'd actually want. All right, so let's jump up to call OpenAI. Let's go to definition there. Now, 
What this is gonna do is check for some environment variables. Remember that OpenAI key? Well, if I have an OpenAI key and I have an endpoint and I have a model in my ENV file. So you'll notice there's an ENV file right here. In fact, I'll open the example. Here's the uh, OpenAI key, endpoint, API version, and model. Well, normally if you're using OpenAI, you just need the key and then the model. I'll show you for that side of it, I've kind of hard coded to keep it simple. These other ones like the endpoint, that's used with Azure OpenAI. So check out one of my other videos, which shows how you can get started. And I do plan to do another video that'll walk through just the Azure OpenAI code to show you what that looks like too. Now, assuming all we have is the OpenAI key and that's all, it's gonna skip these conditionals and it's gonna jump to this. So let me go to this one. And this is just pure OpenAI. Now it's gonna make sure that we have that key in our environment variables. And then it's gonna create this configuration object and pass it that key. Now, where did that come from? Well, remember the package I talked about? That's where it came from. So there's a configuration we're gonna use and there's an open AI API, say that 10 times, that we're gonna use as well. So let me jump on back down here. All right, so what we're gonna do is feed that configuration into our open AI API object. And that creates, in essence, kind of like a little wrapper proxy that would let us call OpenAI under the covers. I've actually never looked, but they're probably using fetch or something along those lines to make the call, but it saves us the trouble of that. Now that OpenAI object has a create chat completion, you can see. Now this is where I'm gonna pass it GPT-35 Turbo. I hard-coded it here just to talk through the options. I also have access to GPT-4, so you could put that. You could put a lower model that's not uh, quite as good, maybe as GPT-35 Turbo. It just depends on how much you wanna pay because you're charged per token. I have a blog post on tokens if you're interested. You can go to blog.codewithdan.com if you wanna learn about what tokens and embeddings and transformers are with AI. But suffice it to say, I'm gonna use GPT-35 Turbo. Now, I put this in here mainly to talk about it. With OpenAI, you're charged per token. Now, 1,024 is probably a lot more than I actually need. That's my max tokens. I could lower that if I wanted. But this, as you see when I mouse over it, is the maximum number of tokens to generate in the chat completion. This is more than I need technically at least in most cases, uh, but this is something you might play with to ensure that something doesn't exceed what you're expecting and you don't ratchet up the cost. So definitely look into that if you're interested. Here's the temperature, 0.5 in our case. So we're gonna be kind of mildly creative. And then here's where I'm gonna pass in. Remember that system prompt was how it should act. The user prompt is what the user wants it to do. I wanna write an email based on these rules. And then here's the temperature already passed in up here. So the way this create chat completion takes this data is through an array of messages. Now, once that returns data, or at least we hope it returns data, we're gonna go into that completion, go to the data choices, go to the very first one and grab the content here. Now, if we don't have any, I'm gonna return empty strings because maybe it returned like a space or something. And then what I'm gonna do is remember I wanted JSON data. Well, on occasion, even though my rules back down in the file here were really clear about return JSON data, I even gave an example, on occasion, it'll return text as well as JSON embedded in the text. So what I'm doing is saying, if we have some content, and that content includes some curly braces, then I'm gonna extract it. So I have a little regex that'll extract out the JSON data, and then I return the content. Now, this is what we'd call post-processing. If you're gonna be working with OpenAI or Azure OpenAI a lot, you're almost always gonna have post-processing. You need to validate and not assume that what you asked it to return is what you actually got. So kind of keep that in mind as you're working with AI, because especially with a more creative answer, like I told it to do, I can get back different types of things. Most of the time it'll be JSON, as you'll see. 
All right, and that's it. And then we return the content back to whoever called, and that goes back into here. And then we just return the result as a JSON object. So what we should get back, if it works, is an email subject, email body, and an SMS message. Let me show you that in action. So I'm using a VS Code extension. It's really nice. It's called Thunder Client. If you haven't heard about it, it's free to install. And this lets you do kind of like Postman, if you've ever seen that, or there's a lot of tools out here to do it. But this is calling the API you just saw. This is the API route right there. And notice that it's a post. So I'm going to go ahead back here and do a post. And then notice in the body, I need to pass it these three things, prompt, company, contact name. So I've already typed that in. Now notice the prompt is empty right now. So if I send it, we get this back immediately from the server. We never even hit open AI. The prompt company and contact name parameters must be provided, okay? Why even call it if you don't have the data to call open AI? Makes no sense. So let's do order is delayed two days. Um, we're so sorry. Let's send that. That's now gonna call open AI. And there we go. So we got back an SMS message, hi Jane Doe, because that's the contact name I said. We apologize, but your order is delayed two days. Use code delay five. Now, where did delay five come from? Well, part of it's the creativity, but part of it is, remember I had a one shot I gave it? If we go on back down here, we will see that right here. So notice, uh, order delayed, give a 5% discount. And I actually have an example here where it actually gives a delay five, 5% 5 discount. Now it learned from my prompt kind of what I was looking for, which may not be what you want. So that's where you would adjust that one shot to include that or not. Now the user would be able to edit these messages. So they could certainly take that out, but now they'd have to know to uh, delete that. So that's an example of how we can set up a Node.js route how we can then create a system prompt and a user prompt, and then pass those into OpenAI using, in this case, the GPT-35 Turbo model, and then get back JSON data. Now, of course, it'd be up to you to write the front end to be able to handle this JSON data. Now, if you're interested, there is a tutorial that'll walk through all of this. In fact, if you go to the URL that you'll see on the screen here, or you can go to the description of the video, That'll give you a shortcut link to this. It'll actually help you get this all set up. Now, it does default to Azure OpenAI, but this app also, as you just saw, supports OpenAI. So it'll mention that too. And then once you do that, it actually walks through much more than I just showed. It'll do natural language to SQL. So you could dynamically generate SQL and it walks you through some of the gotchas of that and what to be careful about. It'll walk you through generating completions, which is the email SMS completions. And then it even shows how you could use like chat GPT type functionality against your own data, your own docs, for example. So feel free to check that out if you want to walk through. It does a lot more than that, but it kind of lets you choose your own adventure. If you only wanted to do the AI part, you could. But there's some other things you can do, such as adding communication features, adding organizational data, things like that. So that's a wrap on this video. I hope if you're using Node.js that this gives you an idea of how to get started. I'll also put a link to the repo inside of the description, so feel free to check that out, and we'll see you in the next video.